What is going on crypto miners and welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm excited to be getting into a build today. We are building a Tempe Synaptron AI node with some of my old GPU mining hardware, bought a few extra goodies here, and we're gonna dive into it today. Now I know what you're thinking. What is this Synaptron AI node? Well, let me tell you. So what in the world is Tempe? Tempe is one of the world's largest decentralized data set and index for, well, the internet. Some of the biggest competitors out there are Google and Bing. And what Tempe brings to the table is total decentralization. And what is this decentralized web index and data set run on? Community nodes. There's three nodes out there, actually four but only two of them have launched so far. And today we're gonna to be talking more specifically and building my the third one, which is the Synaptron node. Now, of the two that are already released, the collector node crawls the internet, indexing everything. And the guardian node actually houses all of that website data, is more of like the backbone of the entire infrastructure. And then finally, the one that we're gonna talk about today, which is the Tempe Synaptron node which is their step into AI, which allows them to do AI models as well as AI tasks as well. So traditionally nodes can't be run from home. They rely on high bandwidth, high uptime, and some beefy hardware. The Synaptron node that we're gonna talk about today is a little bit of the exception. However, for me, I have one of the Guardian Tempe nodes and I have it hosted over on Node Orbit. If you guys are interested in what other nodes that Node Orbit has, it has everything from Flux to Neoxa to Streamer and many, many more. Go over and check it out over at Node Orbit. Now, let's talk more about this Synaptron node because I know you guys are GPU miners. You guys got boatloads of hardware sitting around and you'd love to put it to work. So taking a look here at the Synaptron Hero node, Ooh, they give it this fancy title, Founders Edition. I love it. So taking a look at this, uh, we can scroll down and see this is very different than what we've seen with other node requirements. So great example, the CPU only requires four cores, which is fantastic. I'm actually gonna be downgrading the CPU and the hardware behind me. It only needs 12 gigabytes of memory. So this isn't something where it's like 128 or 64 gigs of memory, only 12. In addition to that, as we scoot down, it all, it needs an NVIDIA GPU. Sorry, AMD fans out there. It needs about 250 gigabytes of storage, can be solid state or NVMe, and it just needs a good internet connection. They haven't specified if it needs, you know, 100 megabits up and down or 500. They haven't really specified that. It just needs a decent internet connection. And I'll explain more here in a minute. Now, this is where it probably interests you guys as GPU miners the most. There's two tiers when it comes down to these Synaptron nodes. Tier one, you can actually run with a four gigabyte or up to a six gigabyte GPU. Have I got your attention now? Because this allows a lot of people, a lot of home miners, a lot of GPU home miners to participate in this. So they give some examples, 1050s, 1060s. I mean, this is wild to see some of these GPUs out there. Uh, 2050s, 2060s, 3050s. Now. When we jump down here, tier two, which is where I'm probably gonna focus on, is from eight gigabyte up to 16 gigabyte. They're, they actually have talked about going even farther up to like higher end ones, like 24 gigabit ones, but 16 is kind of where they're putting it at. And that's cards like 1080 Ti's, 2080 Ti's, or even up to 40 60s. Now, some other things about this, and I know you guys are gonna be interested in this is, you know, Let's look at these GPUs and let's talk a little bit more about this. So the nice thing is about the Synaptron node, and I know you guys are gonna be interested in, is like your first thought is like, do I need to make all these port changes and network changes and port forwarding and UPMP? No, you don't have to do anything like that at all, which is great. Second thing, can you run, do you need a static IP address and can you run multiples of these? No, you don't need a static IP address. And you could run multiple of these at home. That's actually my plan. I want to do a proof of concept, see how all this works out. And then if I can run multiple of these, I'll just put them in my shed, which would be fantastic. In addition to that, you don't need insane hardware. And finally, you can run this on your home desktop computer. Because what makes this very different than some of these other nodes out there that we have seen 
is that you can run this on your home desktop computer when you're not using it. So when you're about to go play a video game, you can actually pause the node you, and it's not gonna count against you. You play your video, video game, you use your computer for whatever, you watch a movie, whatever, and then you can unpause it and continue uh, the AI work that that node was doing. And it just kind of allows it to run hand in hand. So the nice thing is, is I could actually run one on this computer right now that I'm recording on, or the one that we're gonna build behind me, or actually run them on both, which is fantastic. So now let's talk a little bit more about profitability. So jumping back, we talked about tiers, right? Tier one, tier two, four to six gigabyte, and tier two, eight to 16. Well, taking a look at some of the details, and I'll link all of this down below, because I know you guys are gonna have boatloads of questions. Taking a look right now, if it's tier one, so that's four to six gigabyte, you're earning about 1400 NTMPI, that's that's the Tempe token. Or if you're tier two, which what we're gonna build today, it is 1600 um, of that Tempe node per month. So now I know your next question. Next question, jumping on, what is that worth? Well, let's go ahead and scroll down here and 1600 is $92 a month. That's awesome. I mean, that is $92 a month is fantastic for just building something like this. I mean, it's gonna be so cool, especially because I know a lot of you guys have extra hardware sitting around ready to go. You got motherboards, GPUs, you don't need anything fancy, no epics, no 4090s, no 3090s, no crazy power supplies. It's like, just take some of the hardware you got sitting around from your GPU mining rigs and you guys can build one of these. Now, finally, I know you got a ton of questions because I know I did, and they actually put together a great FAQ that answers a lot of the questions and some of the things that we talked about. Even talks about Hive OS in here, talks about the beta, talks about security, talks about uh, GPUs and lanes. I mean, there's so much information in here. I recommend you guys go check it out. I'll put a link directly down below. So without further ado, the part of the video that I'm most excited about, let's take a look at the hardware I'm gonna use for my Snaptron node, and then let's get to work building it. All right, so let's take a look here. So starting out with the case, I actually went ahead and got a small kind of micro tower case here. It's not very big at all. This is an Asus Prime case, and I went with this one. This box is actually well bigger than actually what it is. It's a lot smaller because I wanted something small and form factor. One GPU can fit in it, didn't need to be anything massive, and I could put it in my shed and stack and get more of these if needed. So I'm excited to open this up. Now for my motherboard, nothing crazy guys. This is a Gigabyte B450M, and it already has a processor on it and also a Wraith AMD cooler. Now I am gonna take that off. I was using that for CPU mining. This is actually a 3900X, well overkill for what we're looking for. So what I did was I actually bought this unit uh, off of Amazon, and I'll actually link all of these items down below if you're like, oh, I just wanna build something along with him and build the same thing. We just got an AMD Ryzen 3 4100, four cores, which is what's required, and eight threads. I mean, it's this is, this is plenty, honestly. Then for a hard drive, we talked about a solid state drive or an NVMe. We just picked up this cheap Kingston 250 gigabit uh, hard drive, nothing too crazy. As I said, we don't need to go wild with hardware. Talking about a power supply, I had one of these available from one of my GPU mining rigs. It's an EVGA 650. It's a bronze, but that's okay. Not a huge deal for what we're doing. Plenty of ports on the back, fully modular, so that'll be nice. And finally, what GPU am I going with? Well, take a look. We talked about having a smaller case and I just got a small GPU. I had a bunch of these left over. Uh, I've been selling off my GPUs and this was one that I did not wanna sell off. I actually have six other of these. This is the EVGA GeForce RTX 3060. This is the XC. This is 12 gigabytes total, which I thought would be perfect for getting into AI. I haven't touched anything with AI yet, and I thought this would be a good one for me. So this is gonna put me in the tier two, which is exactly what I was hoping for, rewarding me with 1600 Tempe per month. All right, moment of truth. We are up and running. Windows 11 is doing all that fun update stuff. Dude, this case, this Asus Prime case is so badass, honestly. Like I haven't built a PC in a while, 
but this was an absolute blast. And this thing is not super big, but I mean, look how much airflow there is in this thing. Not that we're really gonna need it with just one GPU in here, but I had an absolute blast. So this case is pretty sweet. It's got like this little notches on the side. You can pop off the case panel and take a look. Look at that, that looks so sharp. I'm super happy with it. So taking a look, the power supply actually mounts a little differently. That, that was a little different to me, um, but that worked out really well with having the cables run to the back. The back made it really easy, real clean. It was able to keep everything nice and cleaned up. Never really ran into a situation where like your power cable, they actually almost have like an adapter that runs with putting the power supply in the front, but it was cool, worked out great. So we have our B450 in there. We have our now uh, the 3100. I kept this cooler only because of the RGB. Probably overkill, but I like it. It's really cool looking. Uh, and then our RTX 3060 worked out well with our Kingsden NVMe in there. So it turned out awesome. I love this case. I'm really happy with it. It was recommended from the community. So thank you guys for recommending this one. So what's next? So now that we have everything installed and we're ready to go, we're gonna get Windows 11 finished up. I'm gonna get drivers put on it. I installed them right onto the USB drive so I can get them right onto the actual PC. And then we're gonna go through, and honestly, it takes like two minutes to install the Tempe Snaptron AI node software, and we'll be off to the races. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how to do it. So now it's time to install the Synaptron AI node software. First step in the instructions that they've provided and actually take a step back. If you guys aren't a huge fan of Windows, they do offer instructions and setup guides for Linux with Docker as well. So that is an option for you guys out there, but we're gonna continue with Windows 11. First step is to update our NVIDIA drivers. We've done that for our RTX 3070. Next step is we actually want to go ahead and they've provided the software for us to run and we're going to run this setup run me file. So I'm just going to right click on it and we're going to go to show more options and do run as administrator. As we're going to get UAC and we're just going to hit yes. And the next step is we're going to hit install. And this is going to go ahead and download the files as needed. Uh, and this could take a few minutes. So I'm going to run through this super quick. All right. So next step here is we're going to hit next. We're going to just leave everything the way it is. Hit next, next, and let it install. Okay. Now we're going to hit close. And there is an icon right here on the desktop. It's a little hard to see with the sky background, but I'll move it to the center. And now we're going to go ahead and launch that. So let's close out of this. And this is actually the Synaptron uh, software. UAC is going to pop up. We're going to click yes. And we have a few more installs to do. So the first one we can do here is actually name our node. So I'm just going to call this AI, for all intents and purposes, AI underscore node underscore one. And then we do have to do this pre-install here. So you can see it actually, the pre-install installs the AI environment and the second one installs the Synaptron AI. So, and then it actually does a detect test image, which is pretty cool. So let's do pre-install. Name must be 16 characters. Holy cow, really? Okay, minimum of 16 characters, that's a lot. So we're gonna do the hobbyist minor AI node one how's that and let's do pre-install and here we go all right so the ai environment has been installed let's click ok and now we're going to install the actual synaptron ai feature which this process is going to take the longest between 8 to 15 minutes all right it's been quite a few minutes everything has downloaded that we need we can actually see on the screen now it says configure gpu select one and it shows my rtx 3060, which is awesome. Now, I guess I can click enable. There we go, set enabled on our RTX 3060 and click okay. So the instructions I have, we're gonna go ahead and close it here. We're gonna check in the bottom right-hand corner and it is still running. We're gonna exit it and then we're gonna relaunch it. We're gonna click yes. And it should have launched it, there we go. So it's good to go at this point. Uh, we can actually come in here and there is a test GPU interface here. 
that we can click and it's gonna go ahead and say this GPU is currently enabled and it's gonna go ahead and test it out. All right, guys, we are all set and ready to go. But now what's next? Well, we actually have to get access to the Tempe Synaptron AI node NFT. So very similar to a lot of other projects where like you have to have collateral, like think of like Flux, where you have to have X amount of Flux to get a Flux node or Neoxa, where you have to get a 1 million Neoxa to get a smart node. Tempe is a little bit different. Instead of needing that amount of crypto, the native token, uh, to put up for collateral, you actually purchase an NFT. So the NFT will be going on sale over the next few days, all depending on when you watch it. So you guys might be watching this in the future and it will be readily available. But if you're watching this on the day the video drops, it'll be actually available on November 20th of 2024. And so I will leave a link directly down below to this. Make sure you guys bookmark it and get ready because on the 24th, these will be readily available. You can purchase these NFTs for $1,250 in the Tempe token. I'll leave a link directly down below to the Tempe wallet. You guys can make sure that you're all ready to go and all the instructions that I went through. All right, guys, that's going to wrap things up for today. I'm super excited to be diving in to the Tempe Snaptron AI node. If everything goes well, I'm going to be setting up several of these. If you guys want links to anything we talked about today, we talked about a lot. I'll leave them directly down below as well as a parts list to what I ended up using for my AI node. All right, guys, good luck. And I hope you enjoy diving into this new project. What's up, guys? Sorry to interrupt your video, but want to keep you in the know. So are you new at mining or you're just looking to get step into it? You're not sure what hardware you want to buy. You're not sure what build you want to do need some help? Maybe you're building your first mining rig and you literally need help step-by-step -step installing HiveOS. Maybe you're so far away from mining, but you're looking at it and you just need somebody to bounce some ideas off of. Well, I offer one-on-one -on -one calls with the community and I've done boatloads, some really cool ones. I've helped people set up ASIC miners in the Dominican Republic. I've helped someone troubleshoot their very first GPU mining rig. I've chatted with a guy looking to open up a farm and just wanted a sounding board. I've helped someone else build and set up and configure their brand new Caspa miners. Well, I'm here to help and I'd love to work with you. If you guys need one-on-one -on -one help, I offer it and I love doing it. So there's a link directly down below to thehobbyistminer.io. Go over there and schedule some time with me. All right, back to the video.